Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome to my shop. This is Metal Tips and Tricks. In front of me is probably one of the most challenging things I've ever done on the metal lathe. This is a cutter head out of a Parks planer, and a planes wood, of course. It's not like the planers we have for metal. Parks planers are one of these great industrial machines that was reduced down to the size for the home user. When my friend Tom bought it, he found out that the head was way out of balance and he took the machine apart to actually rebuild and recondition the machine. Well, what he had discovered about the head and the reason it was out of balance is because the head itself is not in the center of the shaft. So when this was bored out, it was not concentric to itself and the outer side and we need to fix that. Now, there's other challenges with this project. Like I said, this is probably the most challenging turning project I've ever had. We need to be able to get this back in alignment. Right now, it's about, so it's almost 25 thousandths off out around. This side here is at about 5 thousandths. Now, one of the ways you would look at this project is, so we have center holes in the shaft. And I thought, well, great, I'll just chuck it on there. It has some challenges with that, and I'll discuss, you, discuss with you in a minute. But when I did that, I found out it was about 5 thousandths off from the bearing surface here. So there's something a little out of whack. Well, when you look at this end shaft, I don't know, that's probably about 3 eighths, maybe a little bit more in diameter. It's probably bent, and that's what put this off center. The other problem with trying to do it with centers here is this originally the whole shaft was turned down between centers with the head off of it and then the shaft was pressed into place and then bolted to make sure it stayed secure. Well, with that being known, this is a lot of weight for these centers to hold while spinning with a lathe dog on here. And I don't think even if this was true, I'm not sure if to turn it down on the shaft would be the right way of doing it. So we have to discover a better way. And by testing this out, what I think I'm going to end up doing is coming in here with a collet, not a four jaw chuck, but collets. Collets are excellent. The one I have here, they're all hardings, but they're old, and they're just a little worn, a little out, and we're going to leverage that on this machine. So when we put it in, I know it's going to be out probably about a thousandths, and the shaft itself is out probably about a thousandths on the bearing surface. So what we're going to do is rotate it inside the um, collet until we find out where it's centered and where it will be concentric to the rest. Now I'm going to give myself a tolerance of about a thousandths of an inch that should be good enough for this machine. On this side here, we're going to start out with a center. And the reason we're going to start out there is I don't know if this end is off or this end. If the center is too far out, again, we have to be out of thousandths, we might end up having to go in with some sort of adjustable chuck on this end, like a four jaw chuck, to get this all in alignment. But that's also kind of jumping ahead. Here's another challenge with this cutter head, is it's got a lot of interrupted cuts. We have places for all three blades. That's an interrupted cut that we have to deal with all the way across. For each blade, there's a set of five holes. We have another set of holes here. These are set up to lock the shaft down. So there's a lot of problems here. If I just go in with a cheap carbide tool, that type of carbide is not designed the same way as an insert tool is. An insert is, they call it a cemented insert, and it's really cemented and pushed together and held together to make it tougher. Where just normal carbide will chip and break, especially on interrupted cut. So this is kind of an experiment to find out what type of cutter it's really going to take to turn this down. Now, I've already taken a file, but I'll do it again. So luckily, this cutter head is a mild steel, so we're not going to be fighting um, a tough material. Another thing is, we want to make sure we're doing this on the big lathe. We're going to use the clausing on it because I know it's going to be tighter and stronger. And when it's coming around, the interrupted cuts are not going to bother me as much on this big lathe. So here we go. 
this is really a great project my friend Tom brought to me. Let's go um, head over to the lathe, chuck it in, and find out what happens. As you can see, I already have this project into the jaws of the chuck, or actually I should say the collet. Some of you are going to ask why I'm not using a four-jaw chuck right now. And the reason I'm not using my four-jaw chuck is it's a little wacko. I've never gone through and cleaned it since I've bought this lathe, and I just don't trust it. Another thing is I would have to put some sort of protective surface around the bearing area to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. And I'm not really set up for that. So I decided to go into this collet. And you'll see here in a minute that a collet, because of its great accuracies and inaccuracies combined with the shaft's inaccuracies, we're going to be able to still tweak this out to within a thousandth of an inch. Right now, I'm set up also on this end with just a live center, kind of a little snug. So let's start spinning the dials. What I first want to do is I want to mark a hero position on both of these. And this is where I've started so I know I'm not repeating myself. So right there, we're about a thousandth of an out. out. So this is half a thousandth gauge. So each one of these marks on here actually represents a half a thousandth, not a thousandth. So you need to look at it that way. So right there, we're dancing within about a thousandth. We'll turn a little bit more. Thousandth and a half. And we'll just keep turning it until we find what we would consider a more favorable mark. Like I said, if we're within a thousandth, I think we're going to be doing really well here. Oh, there's a half a thousandth right there. Now let's go a little bit further and see what happens. Now I'm going to put another mark here just because it worked. Okay, we're getting worse. You know, it's interesting how as machinists that we can measure so accurately that we keep wanting to push it further and further. I'm just going to save myself some time, go back to our best mark. Wow, that's under a half a thousandth. That's doing really great. So let's bring this over to the other side and see how it's reading. One thing great about these Noga arms is their flexibility. But we're going to kind of use the same trick again. This live center is off just a little bit, so we're going to rotate it just a touch, tighten it back up, and see how it spins. OK, right there, we're in about a thousandth. I think that's well within tolerance. Now, let's talk about cutters. Let me bring over another one here. So I've got some just general carbide cutters here. I actually picked this one out in particular because you can see it's got a pretty gnarly chip out of it. And that's one of the problems with prefabricated cutters like this that have carbide soldered onto it or welded into position. This type of carbide is very hard, which makes it very brittle. Where if we go into a cemented carbide cutter tip like this, the way that it's put together makes it a tougher cutter. And I think it'll be more favorable with the interrupted cut. Another thing I had to look at on this is which end that I wanted to put this in. I'm just going to kind of go over this again is, Remember on one end of this, it only had a 3 8 of an inch shaft. And to put it over here, I think it would have caused a lot of problems because it's just not strong enough. Another thing we want to look at is the way this rotates around, is if I had this head flipped the other way, I'm going to be going into a very sharp edge, causing me a lot of problems. Now the speed I'm going to run this at, I don't know, this thing is about three inches in diameter, be my guess. I'm going to spin it at about, boy, about 600 RPMs and see how that feels. Again, this is really a challenge for the way this cutter gets set up and what type of cutter. This one here has a, a slightly positive rake, 
we might end up going to a more negative one. But let's turn on the machine, find out what happens. I'm going to touch off manually on this. I don't want to be digging in too quickly. You know, let's touch off on the other end since it's out quite a ways. Well, I have to say that's going a lot better than I realized. Let's take it in another 3,007 inch and let's finish this out and see how it goes. Boy, that's working out great. Let's go in another. Th I'm going to go in five thousandths and do a whole cut now. I'm feeling very confident. So far, so good. Machine isn't even vibrating. So you get to see what's going on here. You can see how thick the, I want to say the rust, we'll call it patina. Let's make it a nicer word. Kind of fades through and comes off to here where we're barely even cutting. And if you can see on top of my cutter, this is just dust. It was just taking rust off that very end. But boy, it's done a really a nice job. Now if you'll notice, I cut from the left side to the right side. The reason I cut from left to right is I didn't want to take the chance of cutting in here very with a very fine cut and get it harder and deeper and deeper through here because it might have bound up. And traditionally, you also never want to cut against your live center or your dead center because it's not going to handle as much of the stress as the headstock is. From here on, we're going to be cutting from left to right. We're going to go in, boy, I'm feeling really confident. I think we're going to go in ten thousandths on this one. Well, I have to say we're cleaning up really well. You can see this edge here has got a pretty tough burr on it. This one here has completely been cut. So this section here, you can see how out around it is. And also at this end, I never noticed that before. So we've gotten some cutting here. So don't have much to go in. Well, let's find out. I'm going to zero the gauge out and bring it in and see when it cuts. Okay, about 15 thousandths more. So I'm getting still, it's a pretty rough finish. I'm feeding it at a pretty quick rate. I don't think I'll take the risk and cut the full 15th yet. I'd like to do a finishing pass, so we'll go in another 10th and then the last 10 or the last five will be done with a sharp cutter and also a slower feed rate. Well, we've got a little bit more to take off. Um, I've had a little bit of chattering going on. Look at my cutter. It's, it's starting to take its abuse. But I'm really, really happy with what's going on. Let's do a quick little measurement. Okay, we're about a thousandths out over 12 inches. I think I can accept that. Um, part of that thousandths may just be because of the rough finish. So I'm going to sharpen this up and make a final cut. Well, I just finished up my final cut, and I got to say it's working out really well. Had some challenges with the finish. I had the cutter at the wrong angle. I tried a bunch of other cutters off, um, off camera um, just to see if I get a better cut, and I actually went back to originally what I started with. So it says I kind of knew what I was doing, which is rare. Finish looks good. Let's do um, a measurement. Hmm. 
Mm, about a half a thousandth. I think I'll take that over 12 inches to be a half a thousandth off. If I probably made a little more detailed reading, it's probably a little bit closer. So I think that's definitely within tolerance of what this is going to be. Now, you know, if this system wouldn't have worked and it would have chattered a lot, what I would have had to done was take the cutter head off the shaft and come in with a large bull nose, mount into there, and come up with another mounting system here, which probably would have been another shaft that had been a lot stronger or something. But I was lucky. This really worked out well. I thought this was going to be the most difficult turning I ever did. But at the end of the day, you know, it worked out really well. And I'll say thanks to the closing lathe here, um, being this just a bigger, heavier lathe than the Entco, it definitely made this job a lot easier. Now the guess is, and see these two holes here, or four holes? Those were originally put in here to help counteract the out of balance, and it was drilled here where it was the thickest point and it was out of balance. So it'll be interesting to see if those interfere with us now or if there's any problem that I'm going to have to deal with. I think this project we can consider it done. If you like this type of video, give me some thumbs up. Give me some positive comments. You did hear the word positive in that. Or I guess you can give me some negative ones. I don't care. You can beat up on me if you need to. And I think this project worked out really well. So until next time, go out in your shop build something cool. Thanks. Just like I did with the other bit is I did a depth of a thousand, uh, 70 thousand, I did a depth of that, 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 that. I did a depth that was a lot. I did a depth that was um, somewhat deeper than it was.